Liberals have had a lot of signals about reducing free speech or cracking down on online hate. Do you see some actual evidence of that, or do you think the shoe hasn't dropped yet? Well, I think it's not it's about the shoe dropping as the race is gradually tightening, right? Philosophically, they're in favor of free speech, provided that people say the right stuff, and if not, then it's going to be the law. And so it just is embodied in all kinds of different legislation, not because it's a flaw, because they're going to do it in one fell swoop, but just because it's part of their governing philosophy. So they have the human rights tribunals, and they have the loopholes in the charter, and things. There's a thousand ways in which it's possible for government to restrict what we say, and they're doing it in the conviction that they're virtuous. Right. There was a mandate given to Navdeep Baines about the privacy commissioner's power to establish new online rights, including the ability to be free from online discrimination, including bias and harassment. Now, if I look up bias, harassment, anything like that, I don't even see that language in this copyright legislation at all. The only thing that I see is in Bill C-10, it changed this Canadian content thing. It said it should serve the needs and interests of all Canadians, including Canadians from racialized communities and Canadians of diverse ethno-cultural backgrounds, socioeconomic statuses, abilities and disabilities, sexual orientations, gender identities and expressions and ages, and reflect their circumstances and aspirations, including equal rights. As it puts the internet streaming under the broadcast act, it expands everything I've just said to all broadcasters. Do you think this is going to result in the kind of censorship that we've been fearing? These people are pretty incompetent. So what they're trying to do and what they actually do is not quite different. So what does it mean? Are they going to take people off the internet if they don't do these kinds of things, if they don't silence the wrong kind of speech and broadcast the right kind? What exactly, what are they going to do? Shut Yahoo down or, you know, YouTube? So that's part of it. I don't even think they know. They don't think that way. If these are the kind of people who worried about the details of legislation, they'd be very governing very differently than they are. But insofar as they can, yes, in terms of regulatory hassles and subsidies, you know, it's going to be the death of a thousand cuts, not one beheading. I don't see how you can control the internet, right? I mean, we have enough trouble with the, the climate discussion. Next is all these people who insist on posting comments that use synonyms for excrement. And we have a rule against it. I don't know if you agree with us or don't agree with us. You can't even say BS in our channel. And that people do it all the time, and I delete their comments. But, I mean, how on earth would they ensure that comments on the climate discussion network was affected people in diverse ethno-cultural backgrounds? Right. You know what the backgrounds of people are. It's just, it's just one of these bizarre statements where if you, if you could get nasty veins and give them the sodium and say, honestly, what do you think that means? The chances are 10 to 1 to say, I have never given it a second thought. And now that you mention it, I have no idea. <laughs> See, they're talking about this only applying to internet streaming services. Yeah, and, and then what does that even mean? Like, does it mean that Hollywood can't put on a movie if it doesn't show sensitivity to the transgender? Like, they're not going to anyway. Yeah. Is Netflix going to have a series where the hero is a conservative Christian pro-lifer? I don't, don't, I don't think it's going to be. <laughs> I mean, that even, anyway, coming up on the radar. We now have a non-traditional gender hero of some sort. Afraid you're right. You know, looking back at when you testified in the summer of 2019, what were you really trying to warn off there? I was trying to warn off bad thinking in principle. I thought somebody had to get in there and just restate the argument for free speech so that if anybody cared, it would be on the record from a, a fundamental point of view. Because I think so often we lose these battles because we decide the principles are for losers, and then we try and fight on the details, and we've lost the hearts and minds of the populace and of the people in power before we even start. So I thought, I'm going to go in there, and I'm just going to take my moment and remind them what John Stuart Mill said. And anybody who cares can watch my testimony and say, Okay, yes, that's true, or they could say, well, some people said, we're an idiot. But there's no point arguing the details if you don't establish the fundamental principles. Like the people who want to concede that man made global warming is an imminent threat and then oppose the carbon tax. I call this rallying around the white flag. It's just not a strategy that's ever going to work. And so I just wanted to get in there and remind people the fundamentals because if we lose those, we're certainly not going to win on the, on the specifics. I was extremely disheartened to see the conservatives allow the NDP to cut the fee. Of it. I thought that was just especially disturbingly ironic. How did you feel about it? I regard those people as spineless weasels. I wasn't even slightly surprised. Okay, politicians are not leaders, especially not conservative politicians. You can look at Aaron O'Toole. 
what, what a Jack Saxon is. I'm the true blue candidate. I'm sure you are, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the main thing is they have no courage, right? It's not even that some of them have convictions, but they don't have any courage. Without courage, convictions are no use to you. And they're just terrified that some liberal, someone will dislike them, and then the liberals hate them anyway and despise them. And then they lose another election and go, ah, I guess we were too right wing. But I, no, I wasn't, that, that didn't surprise me. It would have astounded me if one of them had stood up and said, no, Mr. Chairman, that's outrageous. Wow. So what are you expecting from here? I mean, do you think the liberals have shown all their cards yet, or do you think that there's something else on the way? What could the next cut be? The thing is, again, I don't think that the liberals have a plan. I don't think that they look at legislation and grasp how it works and what needs to be done. Right? You've got people like what's the name, Monsef, trying to involve farthest chagrin. These aren't people who understand what the civil service is telling them. The civil service probably tells them as little as possible. Remember, at one point they had to say the liberalology good because it suddenly occurred to them that it's good to deliver on your promises and also that it was hard. But then they realized it was too hard, so they just stopped trying. Uh, so what you're going to get is not going to be some plan that's unfolding. It's just going to be random impulses and virtue signaling. And, you know, if they had a lot of resistance, they'll kind of back off, and then they'll, they'll come back at it. But again, not because it's a plan, but just because that's how they think. Sure. Think everybody will be nice and like them, and we'll all have diverse backgrounds. But I don't even know what that means, right? Like, if you're a teacher, you don't have a diverse background, you're a teacher. But, again, I get you. they don't think. What do you think is the spectrum of speech that they are trying to curtail that is not covered under current human rights law? I don't think they know. I, I don't, again, I, I don't think they look at it and say, hey, you know what, this covers X, Y, and Z, but it doesn't cover W. I think they just want the same sort of feel-good stuff everywhere. And they said, oh, there's enough feel-good stuff on the internet. We'll make a lot of feel-good stuff. And again, if, if you would ask the minister how this is going to work in practice, uh, if you would ask them who's going to enforce it, pop quiz. What's the regulatory body? I think the odds are three to one they wouldn't know. And if you said, how is it going to work? Uh, what's the procedure? Do, do you have to apply before you put a show on? Or are we going to cut the feed if we don't like what you're saying? Because I mean, the internet streaming services, they don't want to originate from Canada. So if Amazon is a streaming service, they're going to block it. Right? Are they going to stop people from having VPNs and tunneling across the border? I sincerely doubt they've given any of this any thought. They're just not that kind of people. Do you think that they have politically incorrect speech, especially in mind? Oh, I'm sure they do. Yes, there's no, there's no question. Uh, I think it's funny. One of my kids actually had a civics class. And the first day, the teacher said, this is a civics class. The following subjects shall not be debated. They are not a matter of policy. They are human rights. Human rights are not up for uh, debate in this class. Huh. And, of course, you can just guess what the list was. Yeah. Uh, and that's just how Justin Trudeau thinks. He thinks human rights. These are not, uh, and if you, if you argue that say, you know, women shouldn't have a right to abortion, then you're attacking women. It's a microaggression, and we won't let you do it because you're making the world an unpleasant place, and nobody decent wants to make the world an unpleasant place, so you can't. And, and if you say, well, what do you think of what Bill said? You'd be like, what? Who? And so, again, it's, it's part of the problem with this is that Winston Churchill in the 30s said trying to warn people about Hitler was like being smothered by a feather mattress. And I get a feeling it's a bit like that because it's, it's so amorphous. It's not uh, a thing you can get hold of and defeat. It's just this kind of nebulous feeling that we should not allow discordant sentiments to be expressed. And so we're gradually hemming them in with whatever tools we can find and tools to get at them. Can you reiterate then why free speech is important, including this kind of speech? There are three reasons I don't think it's ever been improved on. So the first one is that something we think is untrue might turn out to be true. Right? We've been surprised before. Think of all the ideas that when they were first expressed were thought to be not just wrong but disgusting. I mean, you could say this to a leftist, right? Remember when people first said that homosexuals should be allowed to marry? Everybody was the same. So you have to let people say stuff because it might turn out to be true. Second reason is because if an idea is false and awful, you want it exposed and refuted. You don't want it festering in the dark. You know, that's the Dracula effect of some like the story of evil. And the third reason is that even if something, you think something is true and then it's challenged and debated and it turns out it was true, once we've actually thought it through and stood up for it and, and gone through the argument, it is not just a tired slogan, it's a living truth in our mind. So the three reasons are one, it might be true. Two, if it's really bad, we need to expose it and destroy it. And three, we need to sort of understand our own ideas and live them instead of just reciting them. And unless you believe that, you, that falsehood can defeat truth in a fair fight, you have nothing to fear from bad ideas. Exactly. 